very seriously to ensure it's not third time lucky for Ghana. The U.S. ambassador to Ghana, Jean Kretz, has predicted a 3-2 victory over Ghana. With a very, very deep heart and a very sad countenance, I have to say that the United States will emerge victorious 3-2. But the black stars are equally determined. We have all the pre-match analysis coming up later in the bulletin. Before that, though, there is a case of over 200 Ghanaian football fans drawn from various supporters' unions to go watch the ongoing FIFA World Cup in Brazil and to support the black stars. But those, but those hopes have been dashed. Though some supporters have been airlifted already to Brazil, there are a whole lot more who say they were due to go, but have been disappointed. They include some high-profile names such as popular Ghanaian boxers, Bukum Banku and Ayiti Powers. Matilda Womega has more of their story. The supporters, who claim to be a part of a government-sponsored group to the World Cup in Brazil, rather than being on a plane to the American subcontinent, passed the night in the open at the Kutika International Airport. This resulted in some confrontation with the security officers. <laughs> Some of the supporters claimed they had actually been made to part with various amounts. So how much did you put into this? Thousand mm dollar -hmm. for the plane, uh, plane ticket. Who did you pay this money to? The members of the supporting union, the NEMA supporting union. Mm -hmm. One of the members called Adeba, uh, Adewale. Even the passport, they collect five hundred dollar, made almost fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. The passport and the visa. Uh, visa. After that, then they say, well, I have to donate $1,000 for the plane tickets. Mm -hmm. And I give the money to them. Since yesterday, we are there up to today. Now we are moving from here to Staden again to go and search for uh, the, the, this thing, the, the person. Since yesterday, since we, 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 we've been here since yesterday, 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I will sleep here. So that at the time I just done, the, the, the flight will come this down for around 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. We waited for here a long time. They, they even took our money and everything. Who, who took your money? The organizers, the, 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 the organizers. Which, which organizers are those? No, we have we have uh, so many type of organizers that like they, they are taking us to our place. Uh, some of us are from far, far. Some of us, some of us don't live here in Accra. From far, they came here. But so now they said, they said now we should go back to uh, this stadium. But, the stranded supporters eventually had to make their way to the Accra Sports Stadium, where they hoped they could get some assurances from their leaders. So earlier, we were at the Kotoka International Airport, where we saw over 100 of these supporters stranded at the airport. As to what are the reasons accounting, we, we do not know. More of the supporters alleged monies had been taken from them with the assurance they will be taken to the tournament. Uh, have you been assured of leaving the country As today? Me, personally, I've been assured because I, I um, by the authorities that um, since I have my accreditations, maybe I may go. Maybe. maybe. Actually, we have been here since morning, and they said our name was mentioned for the accreditations, but we have been waiting for a very long time. I just thought our name has been mentioned. Yeah, and from the look of things, um, to my side, I don't think there will be any good news. Yeah. Why do you think there's not going to be any good news? Uh, because um, they, they said we should come today, we should come tomorrow, and I've been here since last week. Yeah, and yes, my name has been mentioned, and um, I don't think my name is in it, because I learned um, there have been one or two... Um, issues behind back doors. Yeah. The first thing I should be having, but yes, still I don't have my accreditation here with me. Even my visa and everything is ready, but accreditation is not here and I can't travel. That's the reason why I'm still here in Ghana. Yeah. Uh, but do you expect to travel any moment? Well, very sad because of the actions that I've seen around him, around me here. There's no any signal for me to have any accreditation from anywhere. The only thing, the news that I've been hearing now around from, from the people here is uh, uh, authority from above said that the, uh, the accreditation should not be issued anymore. And so we are, we are, we are here sitting down. We don't know where, where we're going. Either we go or not, we don't know. The manager of Ghanaian boxer Bukum Banku was outraged his clients, along with fellow boxer Aiti Powers, had been woodwinked. Went to the airport, they said we should come at 10. We went there back. Then they said we should come uh, as early as 6, still to the airport. 
We went there again. Then they say we should come to stadium. Whatever they are doing now, we don't understand. As I'm speaking to you, Bukumbanku and IT Powers, they are all in the airport now. Uh, yes, we will say that we are looking forward. Yes, yes. Uh, if today is not coming on, we'll just call it off. Security officers deployed at the stadium also had a tough time calming the frustrated supporters. Member of the Ghana Brazil 2014 Organizing Committee assured while some of the supporters will eventually be airlifted, they cannot be held responsible for all of them. They just went to um, obtain or secure a visa and then they are here waiting for a chance to travel. But of course, um, that may not necessarily be the way to go because they are representatives. We've, we've given them allocations pro rata, uh, pro rata basis, you know. So um, some have left, others are still behind. So um, we've mopped up the remnants and the other ones we are moving in this last, uh, on this last trip. We have put arrangements in place to ensure that they travel today, and that's what I know. How many people are you airlifting today? Um, a little over 200, I think. The Youth and Sports Ministry had indicated an initial number of 500 supporters were to be flown to Brazil to support the Black Stars, even though it said the number could rise. Matilda Humaga for Joy News, Accra. Well, as the last time we checked, uh, Bukumbangu and uh, Aite Powers are not uh, or are still in Ghana, so they've not been able to make it to, to Brazil. Meanwhile, President uh, Mah Dramani Mahama has charged the Black Stars to go all out to secure victory over the United States of America in today's encounter, sounding very upbeat about the team's chances. Um, I've, held, I've heard the captain, Asamwajan, uh, 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 warn against uh, complacency. And so I know that the boys themselves know that they must not be complacent. Um, U.S. has a very good team, and um, even though we've played them twice and beaten them, we should not take it for granted. The boys have prepared quite well. We watched their um, uh, friendly matches in advance of uh, the World Cup, and we could see that the team was in quite a good shape. And um, I believe that if they go in to the match and they play according to the game plan, that the coach uh, gives them, we should be able to emerge uh, victorious. Um, the other times that we have defeated the USA, I watched some of the commentaries by the various uh, American news channels, CNN, and they wondered why a tiny speck of a country like Ghana could uh, defeat a superpower. Um, football is not about superpower, it's not about nuclear weapons, how many nuclear weapons you have. It's about skill and talent, and Ghanaians have talent. And um, I believe that our boys, uh, well psyched up, would be able to uh, give a third defeat to the United States. All right, so we'll be going over shortly to get to see what the situation is like at the fan parks uh, where Multi TV is uh, allowing fans to go to get to see the game and uh, pretty shortly we'll be going over somewhere during sometime during the bulletin we'll be going over but that's the fan park there the aviation social center where multi tv is making it possible for fans of the black stars to see the game but in other news 422,946 candidates from 15 12,000 Private and public schools have begun writing the week-long basic education certificate examination today at all centers across the country, starting with English language and religious and moral education. Minister for Education, Professor Nana Jinupukwajimang, together with officials from the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service, on Monday taught some BEC centers in the Tema metropolis. The tour was to ensure that everything required to facilitate a smooth takeoff of the exams was in place. The minister and her team were at the Tema Secondary School, Mahian Secondary School, St. Peter's Cluster of Schools, and rounded it up at the Ashaman Secondary Technical School, where a few absentees were recorded. 
Professor Nana Jane Upukwajiman expressed satisfaction with the turn of events, particularly the attention given candidates who were physically challenged. This is a very important national exercise that occurs at the basic level. I was very, very happy to see in one classroom where the examinations were taking place that special care has been taken for the student who has low visibility. They were supposed to have a different color of exam, of exam sheet, and I was happy to see that that had happened. Those who need other care have also been so provided. When the day has ended, we'd like to hear from all the centers to see how things have gone, what we need to improve even for tomorrow. And when the exercise is all over, we'd also like to know what were our successes, were, what were our challenges, what we need to know, even as we prepare for the years ahead. Tema Mayor Isaac Ashai Odamton also commended the West African Examination Council and urged all candidates to conduct themselves properly in accordance with the rules and regulations governing the exams. This year's exams are being conducted at 1,437 centres. The Ashanti region is presenting 83,859 of the nearly 430,000 candidates. The highest this year, with the least being the Upper West Region, with 12,372 candidates. Wayek has meanwhile warned that candidates who enter the exams halls with mobile phones will have not just that paper cancelled, but the entire exams struck out. There were over 1,500 candidates from 72 schools in Haguna East constituency of the Central Region writing. This year's basic education certificate examination, I expected to enjoy free lunch for the five-day period. The move initiated by the Member of Parliament of the area, Queen Star, Mami Pukwa Soya, is to encourage the pupils to give off their best during the exams without worrying about food or being hungry. The area has recorded some very poor results at the BEC in the last few years. Speaking to Joy News shortly after the distribution of food items at the Mankren Quanta Center, MP for Agona East, Queen Stamami Pokia Soya, who also doubles as the Deputy Central Regional Minister, indicated that the exercise will help impact positively on the pupils' performance in this year's examination. From 2015, when this group they pass out, Comfort has come in, and Comfort they look after only the girls. That is why I made it a priority. They are, they are, Comfort are coming to organize and they are doing hundreds of them, and it will help the girls to be stable because they give as much as everything Comfort gives. And I'm also supporting them with their fees, and they know I've been visiting them and we are in touch. Judging our peers report for Joy News. Now, the Akachi North District in the Volta region has commenced a commercial farming project aimed at improving their livelihoods of residents under the private-public partnership concept. To, concept. to kickstart the program, the Assembly has acquired a 30-acre piece of land on which it has already cultivated one acre of chili pepper, with maize taking up the rest of the acreage. The project, which also aims at providing employment to the youth in the area, has so far engaged more than 50 workers. The District Chief Executive, James Gunu, explains the Assembly has identified the significance of agriculture in development, hence the decision to support farmers in the area by providing them with farm inputs. He said the initiative also offers another revenue stream for the Assembly, as part of the produce from the farm will be sold and the rest supplied to the school feeding program operators in the district. The DC pleaded with the National Irrigation Authority and the Ministry of Agriculture to assist the Assembly reconstruct spill ways on the Avi Dam. This has been captured in the national budget which was read by the Honorable Minister for Finance and Economic Planning and um, uh, very soon when the funds are released they will work on it as a uh, quick uh, quick you know for us to 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 have water you know in the in the dam. The district director of agriculture said Nuto said farmers working on the farm were taken through some capacity building programs to bring them up to speed with modern farm practices to improve yields. He commended the assembly on the initiative and disclosed some challenges they encountered, even though he remains optimistic about the next season's harvest. Uh, I would 
We had a help from the district assembly. Mm. The DC took the initiative mm. to come and plow the, yeah. the field for us mm. and supply us with seed, seed maize. Okay. The challenge we faced initially was mm. the rainfall. Initially, the rains were not there, mm -hmm. but uh, we tried, started, mm -hmm. and then as we go along, the rain came mm -hmm. and we were on it. But now, you can see the maze, it has, it has a tussling stage. We needed a uh, surface of ammonia or nitrogenous fertilizer to boost the, the, the growth. But it is not a system at all. The government supply subsidy is not yet ready. We heard it's available, it's coming, but it has not arrived yet. That is the only challenge for now that we are facing. The assembly hopes to mobilize about 20,000 Ghana cities from the first harvest of the one-acre chili pepper farm. Comlados reports for Joy News. Now returning to our BEC stories, where Minister for Education, Professor Nana Jainupoku Ajimang, has promised she would look into circumstances leading to the death of two candidates in the northern regional capital, Tamale. The two were said to have died in a motor accident on Sunday while on their way to verify the examination centers. The education minister said it was unusual that the candidates had to first verify their centers. I think a news item was brought to my attention this morning of some two children who were going to verify where they would sit today and there was some accident and really I'm not sure if children are supposed to verify where they'll sit the day before exam. This is not a requirement I think but if it is we'll find out and how you know was it anxiety you know what was it that could lead children to their death just before the examinations began. So we'll get from our perspective or from the ministry itself what exactly happened with those children? I know it's somewhere in Tamale. That's what I've been told so far. I don't have a report before me. So as I said, we'll investigate and see exactly what happened. Who was supposed to go and verify what at what time? Right, so tonight it's all about Ghana's outing against the USA in the Brazil 2014 tournament at the World Cup. It's going to be third time lucky for the Black Stars who have beaten the USA on the two previous occasions they met at the World Cup. As I told you earlier, Adelaide Arthur is standing by at one of our fun parks where we have made it possible for fans to get to watch the games on giant screens. And she's going to be joining me right about now to tell us exactly what the mood is like wherever she finds herself. Social center where some Nigerians have gathered to watch the match between Nigeria and Iran. And um, from the look on their faces, clearly they are not happy because things are not going well for them. Uh, 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 it's, they are in the second half now, but then still the score is nil nil. Nigeria has not scored, but I, I, I bet they were actually had high hopes. They actually thought Nigeria by now would have scored probably three or four. So I'll walk to a few of them and tell them what the problem is, whether they think that, uh, um, whether they are happy with the way um, Nigerians are playing and whether they think that the coach could do some changes to make everything possible for them. So um, are, are you really excited about the play you are seeing now? Yeah, of course I am. I'm very excited because um, for now they are, they, are, they are not doing so well, but I think in a few minutes later, they will be able to do something very nice. So hopefully they will do so well. How sure are you that in a few minutes' time they will be able to? Because we are in the second half and it's still nil-nil. Yeah, of course, I know my boys. Uh, they are good. But just that they are trying to get themselves into the game. So with time, they'll be able to do so well. So I'm sure of that. I'm sure. Okay, but um, do, do, the formation that they are playing with, um, do you think is appropriate? Well, not, not really. Not really, because it's not helping them. Because if it is good for them, they would have scored good by now. So I think they need to make some changes to be able to score the goal. So if you were the coach, which formation would you have them play? 4-4-2 is very nice. So that, that, that's the best thing to do. So they need somebody that's very strong to be able to, to strike and then score the goal. So I think they, they have to work on that. Yeah. And then um, let me come to you. Um, who would you want to see on the pitch? No. Like, I don't understand. Like, I would like to see my players, you know, Nigerian players, see them play a nice ball for me, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was supposed to see, like, 2-0 there by now. Yeah. Wow, 
you are so disappointed. For it. I'm disappointed with that, what they are playing there. Yeah. Like, see my flag. I came with a flag, you know, to show them that I'm three and I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> moving on, if um, they're unable to score and they draw with Iran, moving on, what would you like to see? Because they have two more games to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they, what with this and they're playing, you know, to play with Argentina, I don't think they will make it with this and they're playing. So they're supposed to, you know, put more effort in what they're playing. So... They can make Nigerians proud, you know, as you can see, we're all Nigerians, yeah. yeah. So quickly, let, let, let me move on over here. Um, you've been, you've not been happy, you've not been happy. I've been watching you, you've been, I mean, <laughs> angry at what the players are doing. What would you like to see change on the page? Uh, I would like to come more, um, because the, the change is, the coach do is not good. Because, the change is not good. Yeah, the change is not good because they suppose leave Moses there. They, then they leave. Uh, they come on Moses put. Um, um, I, I can't remember his name. And the guy is not good at all. Okay. They they suppose leave Moses. They move. Um, Musa Musa is not playing anything yet. Okay. So they suppose they move him. Okay. So I'm not happy at all. Oh. The, the what they are playing. But do you have? hope with this um, kind of game you're seeing? Do you have hope that in your subsequent games the Super Eagles are going to perform? Let's see, because as for this one, I'm not, I'm not impressed at all. Yeah. So clearly the Nigerians here are not impressed with the game they are seeing. They would have wished that by now the Super Eagles would have scored probably two or three goals because uh, I'm looking from what we've seen so far, from the games we've seen so far, it's been full of goals. I think this is the only game that we're seeing no goals in it. So um, the Nigerians are really not happy. They, they, they would want to see more fun. They would want to see more performance from the Super Eagle. But away from now, now we're just um, um, less than two hours to the Ghana USA game, and people are excited about it. People are confident that Ghana meeting USA for the third time, they are going to beat them once again. But then um, the US ambassador to Ghana begs to differ. He has actually predicted a 3 2 win against Ghana. But then that game is just less than two, uh, two hours away. So let's see what will happen. After the score, we will see whether Ghana will have a cause to jubilate or go to bed sad from the aviation social center here in Accra. My name is Adelaide Arthur reporting for Joy News. Thank you very much Adelaide Arthur and we're taking a break. We have more stories coming up. Don't go away. 60% of Ghanaian children according to a UNICEF report are out of school. No, the figure is alarming. Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, Nana Oyelitha, at a press, press briefing to mark this year's celebration of the Day of the African Child, says government has made considerable efforts towards improving enrollment. She says government is particularly serious about having more girls in school. The media briefing is the first of a number of activities to mark the 2014 Day of the African Child. The report presented by the United Nations representative, however, did not give much cause for celebration as far as access to education and basic amenities are concerned. Apart from the relatively low enrollment, the reports add that most of the schools lack toilet facilities and access to portable water. For instance, sadly, not all schools are safe spaces for children. Not all schools have adequate water and sanitation facilities, and this negatively impacts learning, particularly for young women, girls, who have started menstruation. Not all teachers are in classrooms teaching children, and unfortunately a disturbingly large number, perhaps as many as one in five, are not spending as much time on tasks they are recruited for. And deployment of teachers is not equitable. And some regions benefit more than others. These challenges affect the learning experience of children and impacts negatively on students' results. A representative from Plan Ghana, who also highlighted the plight of the Ghanaian child, charged the Ministry for Gender, Children and Social Protection to do a lot more to increase enrollment of children, especially the girl child. It is about time that measures are put in place to eliminate the traditional practices and behavior that tends to exclude some group of children, especially children, 
with disability and pregnant girls and others from education. We must all strive for inclusiveness of all children irrespective of their situation. It is for this reason that this year's team, a child-friendly, quality, free, compulsory education for all children in Africa is very appropriate. Though the minister concedes enrollment is a challenge, Nana Oyelitha says the picture is not that gloomy. We have a well-defined institutional framework and are translating the goals and objectives of this department into programs at all levels of governance, at the national, regional, district and community levels. This is a major component of both our gender policy and also the education policy and sector within the government of Ghana. The number of kindergarten schools in Ghana have pro progressively increased since these reforms. There has been an increase from 18,915 to 19,277 in the 2012-13 academic year. Enrollment numbers in kindergarten has also increased in line with recent trends from 61,191 pupils in 2011-2012 academic year. It now stands at 1.6 million pupils. The official enrollment age, that is for four to five years for kindergarten one to two, has also increased, given a net enrollment rate of 74.8%. Source, Ministry of Education 2013. Government Shishios will, by next month, July 2014, conclude plans on passing the child protection policy into law, which will be a major legal tool in fighting child rights issues in Ghana. On June 16, 1976, about 36 years ago, thousands of black school children in Soweto, South Africa, went on a peaceful protest against inferior quality education and demanded their right to be taught in their native language. Hundreds of these young boys and girls were shot and killed by security forces and thousands were injured. The AU subsequently dedicated 16th June to remember the martyrs for their bravery, Ghana will climax this year's celebration with a school debate in the northern region on June 24. At Onamse, Joy News. The Children's Park at Ridge, meanwhile, is to enjoy a major facelift. According to Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, Nana Oyelitha, negotiations are ongoing with UT Bank to partner government on that initiative. Not much has changed at the park in the last 30 years. The once vibrant recreational park for families during festive seasons is currently nothing to write home about. Most of the machines and play equipment are rusty and growing molds. The whole area is littered and has become a haven for lunatics and passers-by who use the place at their convenience. The washroom were in an even worse state. The minister, however, says the situation will soon change for the better. UT has come forward to assist to provide funding to refurbish um, the whole children's park and its work in progress. So we're hoping that soon you will see a children's park that is really a children's park. I also used to go and play there as a little girl, Richard School, we used to go there. And I would also want the children's park to be um, in a, a condition that all children can play there just like how I had that opportunity. So we are working on it. UT um, have uh, undertaken to assist us. We are very grateful to them and we are doing the paperwork and uh, they've done an inspection and uh, soon we will see the refurbishment uh, coming on. The restaurant serving hot meals was about the only thing happening at the park. Israeli Foreign Minister Avidor Lieberman has appealed to President Mahama to help them retake their observer status at the African Union. The Israeli Foreign Minister told President Mahama during a meeting at the Flagstaff House he would have to use his position as ECOWAS chairman to bring them back to the AU. 
The Israeli Foreign Minister who is on the 10 Nation African Tour has indicated relations with countries on the continent are of strategic importance to Israel from a security, political and economic point of view. He has already met with Israeli Ghana business groups as well as security heads to discuss ways of dealing with activities of terrorists since he arrived on Sunday. Uh, political cooperation, we enjoy very good relations and I, I asked uh, um, our request uh, of course to come back to the African Union as uh, an observer, you know. Uh, we uh, suffered during the Gaddafi time. Since Gaddafi took the leadership in African Union, we are not we lost our status in, as an observers. President Mahama says global alliance is what is required now to counter activities of terrorists, not only in Africa, but the world at large. Terrorism affects the whole world. Wherever it is, it, it's, it's a threat to uh, the, the, the whole of the world, not just to the people who live in the particular area. And no one country, you know, has all the solutions to be able to fight terrorism. And so we need to form a global alliance, you know, to confront the um, threat of terrorism. Israel was an observer member of the Organization of African Unity until that body disbanded in 2002 but was blocked from acceding to its replacement, the African Union, by Libya's former dictator, Mama Gaddafi. Well, I know you are anxiously waiting for the big match tonight. I am too. Uh, for now, it's business time, and my name is Abigail Adumako Uh We start off with some issues on HFC, and the Accra Commercial Court is expected to rule on the takeover of HFC Bank by Caribbean Bank Republic on June 23. The court presided over by Justice George Crimson today directed the plaintiff HFC Bank to document its arguments within 24 hours and serve the defendants, including Republic Bank and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The defendants have also been directed to respond in not more than 24 hours after they are served with a notice. HFC is seeking to place an injunction on the takeover on the basis that the Caribbean Bank is not following due process in its takeover bid. In other news, the Bank of Ghana has denied being pressured to review the Forex measures introduced to stabilize the city. The review of the measures introduced in February comes after several calls from various analysts and experts, including former Finance Minister Professor Kwesi Boche and uh, 2012 NPP Vice Presidential Candidate Dr. Baumia. And the President is also said to have directed the Central Bank to relax the measures. A move, some say, raises questions about its independence. Head of Financial Stability Dr. Benjamin Amor, however, insists the revision was informed by their own assessment. The central bank announced that they were going to review the measures long before Zinj. It was done on April 2nd when the, the press conference was held here. Zinj, when was Zinj? So we had planned, and you can't just start to review things and get it the next day. We had planned, and we were implementing it when the Senshi Accord came. So it is not a pressure on us. When you introduce something, you have to go back to the market to assess how it is impacting the market. And that's basically what we've done. We plan to go back to the market to see how the measures were affecting the market so that we can reduce the, I don't want to use your own intended consequence, we reduce the adverse effect and then enhance the positive, the, the strength of the measures. So basically that's what we've done.
In Goldfields, Ghana has raised concerns about the rising cost of production in the industry in the face of declining gold prices. Officials say they have had to lay off about 130 employees at the diamond mines alone, adding that more may have to go if the price of the precious metal does not recover soon. They however say government could help by improving the fiscal regime for the sector. A number of mining firms are in distress as a result of the falling price of gold. Having sunk to record lows, the price of the bullion is beginning to show signs of recovery. Not encouraging enough, though, for firms such as Anglo Gold Ashanti, which is laying off about 6,000 workers, and now Goldfields, which says it had to follow suit. Our projections for the year was to have a price hovering around $1,300 an ounce, the gold price, and that is not what we are experiencing. As we speak today, it's about 1250 uh, the dynamics are changing, but that decision has not been taken to still let go. We there are other things we are doing when it comes to cost reduction. Letting people go is not is not that the, that cost component is not much. There are lots of things we had to cut down on. I speak for the diamond mine, and um, in the neighborhood of 130, somewhere in February March, 130 employees had to 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 be made redundant. Although they have no control over the global prices of gold, the company remains hopeful the situation will stabilize soon. They are, however, calling for a platform to dialogue with government to review the fiscal regime of the mining industry, which they contend is making mining in Ghana unattractive. We are also appealing to relevant stakeholders, especially the government and the state, to take a second look at the fiscal regime surrounding the entire um, mining industry in Ghana. We believe that comparatively, Ghana is becoming gradually becoming one of the most um, difficult places to, 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 to do business in terms of the fiscal regime. There's so much information out there, but when we talk of cost, the all in all in cost of producing gold. That is a picture that is not too clear for people to see. They look at a price. Uh, somewhere in the late 90s, gold was selling at $500. Now it's 1200 so we should be okay. That is what people say. But the cost has more than quadrupled over the same period. So we need that platform to better explain the situation on the ground to the state so that the solution will not come from us. It will come from such a platform, such a meeting. Maybe a century on mining will not be, will not be a bad idea. Gold Fields Ghana maintains, although they dread laying of workers, they have very little choice faced with the current challenges. The company has, however, assured affected persons will be paid the appropriate redundancy packages. Abigail Adamakunchi for Joy News. The Postal and Courier Services Regulatory Commission has expressed worry over the dwindling postal sector in Ghana in the wake of technological advancement. Acting Executive Secretary of the Commission, Isaac Annan Riverson, says a number of Ghanaians are unaware of the Postal and Courier Services offered currently and has therefore advised government to deepen its regulatory efforts to strengthen the sector. Acting Executive Secretary of the Postal and Courier Services Regulatory Commission, Isaac Annan Riverson, was speaking at the launch of the Global Service System Workshop to deliberate on issues undermining mail delivery for efficiency through the EMS. With the advancement of technology in technology, with the email and then social networks, people feel very reluctant to be sending their, their uh, to write letters and then posting. So that's a huge challenge that they need to ad address to ensure that the post remains very important and then uh, a very uh, a critical aspect of communication. So other challenges that you have is carrying parcels across the uh, borders. Sometimes we have the issues with uh, custom, customs uh, uh, operators in other countries, transportation, security, and all these are teething problems that if not well addressed, we will send a parcel or a mail through a postal agency and take a whole long uh, period for it to be delivered and it will reduce customer satisfaction. The important thing is that the challenges have been identified and such workshops as being taken, they're taking place now are meant to address the challenges as uh, they, come, they come about. Director of Postal Policy at the Ministry of Communication, Nicholas Derry, described as challenged the current status of the postal and courier sector. He said the advancement in ICT and infrastructure Structure by their private counterparts remains a major problem for the service. It is seriously challenged by the private uh, operators. And so Ghana Post has to put its house in order 
it is seriously challenged. Even though the network per se is vast, over 300 post offices, main post offices, yet the challenges uh, from the private sector, if we take the courier business segment, for example, uh, Ghana Post uh, is, doesn't, doesn't command uh, up to 50% of the uh, international EMS business. Uh, it is a domestic one that they have a strong command, but for the international cross-border uh, courier items, the, the private operators have taken a chunk of the market. So the Ghana Post is seriously challenged, and they have to really work hard to come up in that area and really compete favorably and win back some of their lost customers. He advised government to work on increasing the postal networks for effective business transaction. So in no time, the Black Stars will be playing against you as an excited, hoping for a victorious match. Do say a prayer for the Black Stars wherever you are. My name is Abigail Admakwiji, and that'll be it for business. There's more news to stay. Now, when was the last time you saw a vinyl, and when was the last time you heard music, Ghanaian music at that, being played from a vinyl? Well, Jam Jar events in collaboration with Golden Stool Project uh, that weekend treated a select audience to a night of good old Ghanaian songs at an event aptly called Vintage and Vinyl at the Nubuke Foundation Gardens. It was a night for Ghanaian music, music old enough to be on crutches or in wheelchairs. But a relatively young crowd, some of whom might not have been born when these songs were recorded, had great fun. event held in a setting reminiscent of mid 1900s was aimed at showcasing Ghana's rich culture but the night was not all about music from the vinyl there was also music from the laboratory and the hewale sounds <laughs> Organizers spoke to showbiz. So it's, it's, that's really what it's about. It's about Ghanaian music, Ghanaian culture, African you know music and culture, and taking it back to a lot of music that has inspired people who are creating music today. I mean, considering the World Cup is on, I'm very happy that we've got the turnout that we have. Um, a lot of people have enjoyed it. We've had a mix of people uh, who like it, uh, who maybe have never been to Nubuke Foundation as well. So it's been a great, uh, it's been a great experience. I think. I think for the first event, I'm really happy with the turnout. Judging from the excitement this event brought, particularly to the youth, it sends positive signals that Ghanaian music is not in danger anytime soon. That's it for Showbiz. Up next, we bring you sport. Showbiz. Definitely, let's talk about the World Cup, and it's time to look ahead to that game between Ghana and USA. I'm already ready, pumped up, getting into the mood. Let's find out what uh, the key actors have been talking about. First of all, here from Asamoah Jan, the captain. He has been speaking at the press conference. What has he got to say before the game? Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the people of uh, Maceo, the way they received us. You know, it was a great thing. You know, we feel we felt really appreciated. And uh, coming back to the um, to the game, yeah, definitely the uh, United States will be coming in their numbers to support their their players, and um, that is what 
we've witnessed from the past two World Cups playing against them. You know, um, def definitely, sometimes the fans play a very, very important role in, in the game. You know, they, it's, they keep on cheering their players to give them more power to just do what they are doing. But um, um, not forgetting, um, we are on the field, we are on the players, not the, the fans. You know, so the, the fans can do their job. You know, they have to just make sure they cheer their players to do the, the thing. But secondly, is the 22 players on the field which are dealing with each other. John speaking ahead of the game and he certainly is hoping to score another goal against the USA. He has been fantastic at that. Let's hear from Coach Chris Pia. Sorry about it. Dr. Coach Chris Pia. Let's hear from him. Uh, the moment is um, we've got very talented, skillful players and we've got some players with pace. So, you know, as I said earlier, you always look at your opponent, you look at the players they've got, and then uh, you think of, okay, let me start with these players because these are the weaknesses of my opponent. And, you know, you use that to design the tactics that you're playing. But um, saying that, we normally combine both, either we rely on counter-attacks or sometimes we go to run. Actually, before the ballot in, you know, I made so many interviews saying that, you know, if you go into the World Cup and you are afraid to meet Brazil or Germany or any you know, of the big teams, then it doesn't make sense taking part. You can as well say, oh, I've qualified, but we're not going. But once you go in, then you must be prepared to play any team that comes across. And um, the most important thing is making sure that you prepare very well so that any team that you're playing who bid, you know, you must make sure that, you know, you're prepared to face him. All right, so that's the coach of Ghana. Now let's hear from USS's coach. And what has he been talking about? Coach Klinsmann has been saying a number of things. Let's hear from him. I think it's been pretty disappointing results for, for Portugal. I mean, yeah. they didn't expect that it was, it was going to be a run over like this. But, but that's what the German team have, and you have to be careful. That's why I predicted that Germany might, in the end, beat every team in our group. That's just the truth about it. Well, yes, I know we want to be optimistic about it, but I think Germany have the firepower to beat every team in our group. That's just it. We have to understand that. You know, that's crucially. And um, the other thing we have to look at as well is that the Portuguese team have just showed us time and time and again they are not able to hold your net. Pepe getting a red card when it was just seriously unnecessary, you know. So I'm disappointed in that. Nigeria also not able to pick up a point. It was unfortunate. They drew goalers with Iran. No, 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 no. The next game is against Bosnia and okay, Argentina, who played well. Anyway, let's look at our game, yep. which has to do, and the lineup is out. That's right. Looks um, very much like a 4 4 2 formation for me. The, the stadium is called the Estadio da Duna. In Natal. You are right. Estadio da Duna. You're taking your Portuguese lessons very seriously, yeah, I can yeah. see. So, so that let's, sounds like a guy, a guy name. A guy <laughs> But let's look at that. A lot of talk had gone into this about whether it was going to be Fatal Dado, Adam Lassen Corasse. So it ended up Corasse is in there. Daniel Pari is at, is at right back. Now, that's, that's quite interesting. Daniel Opari at right back. Well, let's hope he's able to hold his nerve. Issues there. We wanted to see Harrison Alfo match. People might be very uh, comfortable with Harrison keeps on saying that, you know, I mean, we should leave things for him. We have left so. it to him. John Boy. I mean, Jonathan meant to John Boy. We have no issues with that. Kwejo someone at left back again. That one, uh, lots of Ghanaians will have issues with that. Look at the midfield. I think that's fairly okay. There's uh, Suleiman Tari. There's Rabiu. There's Rabiu. There's Jordan Ayew. There's Christian Ayew. But crucially, there's going to be Jordan Ayew and Asamojan. You know, up front, there's going to be uh, Dedi Ayew and Christian Ayew in the midfield. That's what it's going to look at. You look at the, the lineup for uh, the United States, and it's very much what we expected. Of course, the key men. Beasley has been, you know, much more of a beast when it comes to getting onto the balls there. One of that, you can look at. Dempsey's in there. Bradley's in there. Altidore is in there. Jones is in there. And so, it's just about a strong team. Tim Howard is also the trusted man who's been doing a fantastic job for Everton in it for USA. All is set for this game, but I think Ghana is going to win this game anyway. <laughs> Even if it means no business again for us. <laughs> we're going to win it and take it that way, surely. All right. So we're, we're hoping, we're hoping that we, we get to win. And we're wishing the Black Stars all the best. Uh, there have been some predictions. Apparently the U.S. Uh, ambassador mm. to Ghana, Gene Kretz, is saying that uh, they're going to win by three goals. You know, when, when you, Israel, when you think about it, it's just fine that um, USA will get the revenge. But that's not football. I mean, one team can beat another team for even 100 years before giving up. 
there are room, or there's a lot of room for, you know, what should I call it, surprises and all. But I think this Ghanaian team, even player by player, this Ghanaian team looks on paper stronger than the United States. I know very much they're going to try their best to play the tactical football they know. But we have boys who can turn things around. It's going to be a tight game, I promise you. You're going to be at the edge of your seat throughout the game. Yeah, yeah. But let's find out what Certainly. happens. Shit. Right, thank you. That's it for sports.